This is the story, all about how my build got flipped, turned all around. I'd like you to take a minute, just sit right there and listen to how I blew $250 worth of ignition components because of my mistakes and bad wiring and stuff. All right, if you've seen my previous videos on ion sensing or my ignition coil mods or anything else I've done, you know that I'm not running a stock ignition. Now, I was running a stock ignition at one time, and then I switched to these. They're really awesome ignition coils, got a lot of power to them. They're actually made for a Mercury Marine engine. Lovely. They work just fine with the stock settings. But there's a problem. I wanted to run ion sensing with these ignition coils, and you can't. Because there's an internal diode in there that prevents the coil from ringing when it starts. It prevents an early spark, basically, and, well, I can't read the continuity across, so I can't get ion sensing data. Even before that, I played with these. Now, this is an ignition coil off an Isuzu Rodeo, and uh, while I can make it spark and I can read ion sensing data off of it, the dwell time is incredibly different from stock. Now, five milliseconds, less than one millisecond. It doesn't work. But I found a trick to make it all work. I found the coils I have now, which are this ignition coil without the internal igniter and with no diode. But in order to make those work, I needed an ignition control module. Stock coils wouldn't work for what I wanted to do. Super beefy upgraded coils wouldn't work for what I wanted to do. Coils off a completely different vehicle never designed for this application wouldn't do what I wanted to do without, well, some electronic wizardry. So, box to drive the coils that would actually do what I wanted them to do in the first place. Spark and provide data. It all would have worked great except for one thing. Me. At least I think so. I'm not 100% sure. My wiring on these ignition coils was kind of sketchy. Now I did a lot of the wiring right. I did a wiring harness that leads to the coils. I did a wiring harness that leads to the ECU. All's great there. Uh, I grounded the coils near the battery. It's an okay ground, but that's the primary side of the coil. The secondary side of the coil, I grounded out on that little nut back there. And, well, while that's an okay ground, uh, the nut actually came off once while driving and led to one of the most recent times I've been stranded on the side of the road with this car. But that's not the end of it. I'm driving to drop the kids off at school, I drop them off at school in the morning, I'm coming back home and the engine dies. And I can't get it restarted, I try. So then I get my wonderful wife, wonderful, loving, amazing wife, to drive me home. And when I get home, I start diagnosing. What could it be? At first I thought, it's the coil driver, it's gotta be, I mean, I can check, it has continuity where it shouldn't have continuity. There's something wrong. But that didn't work, it didn't solve the problem, and it led to it blowing ignition fuses. Yeah, we're in trouble now. So then, I started checking the coils, and out of the four coils I have here, three were bad. Let's see, been driving with these new ignition coils for under 3,000 miles, probably under 1,000 miles. I haven't been keeping good track of mileage. And yeah, they failed, three of them all at once. And I don't even know for sure why, because when they failed, the ground issue I had fixed. It may not have been perfect, but it was better. So right now I'm hoping, hoping against hope, that this is all my fault, that it was a bad connection that caused all this. But I don't know for sure. So I've ordered new ignition coils. They should be here in a couple days. I've spent a couple weeks reevaluating. I ended up looking, 
see if I could find a way to bypass the internal diode on one of these coils or actually just about any four wire coil you can find out there and there really is no way also looked really really long and hard at these these are from the Suzu Rodeo which has ion sensing technology on it so you would think wow you can you can just use that you can hook up to it and then use it in your car but the dwell on these is much shorter than the dwell on well any of these in stock configuration completely different so I'd have to use a microcontroller to change the dwell time I can do that so what about using the ion sensing signal that's on the Suzu hardware well I thought that was a grand idea hey it could be just what I need I can get rid of half of the stuff that I have under here and have the perfect build but it just wasn't to be the problem is the Isuzu hardware is designed for an Isuzu a piston engine and there's some major differences. The frequency is different. It might not even hear knock at all. The angle at which knock happens is also completely different. So even if it could hear knock, it might be filtered so that it only listens during a certain time period. There's no ion signal out. The only thing I could get out of the stock Asusu hardware were two pulse width modulation signals and neither one of them was what I needed. So, eh. Now there are a couple other things that I considered, but, well, didn't really pan out. I looked at the Sobtronic system, I've looked at it before, I thought maybe if I'm going to go all the way to adapt the dwell for these Isuzu coils that, well, I could just adapt it to CDI and then use a Saab setup. That's still an option, but, man, it would be a lot of modification, I'd have to have the hardware on hand, and I don't even know if it'll output a signal I can use just like these. Another option is there are other vehicles with ion sensing technology that might give me exactly what I want and need but I don't know what they are. More importantly I don't know what signals they put out even if I could find exactly what it was. So here I am waiting on parts again lighting money on fire because of my own stupidity which is the way of the race car and with a little bit of luck in another week I'll be back up and running on new ignition coils with um, less sketchy ground. I'm not going to say it won't be sketchy. Look, this is me we're talking about. I've been known for hackery under the hood. I'm just saying it will be less sketchy and more functional. And hopefully that'll fix it for good. If not, these Isuzu ignition coils might start looking really good. If you've liked this episode of Voiding Warranties, please click like. And if you want to see more like it, click subscribe. And remember to catch Voiding Warranties on Facebook. Until next time, keep on Voiding Warranties.